Okay, Tyler Perry fans. Now, recently I've had some conversations with other fans in regards to what exactly will Tyler Perry do in 2024? Because if you are unaware, his current contract with Viacom ends in 2024. I mean, the news of this first broke out way back in 2017. I remember when the news broke and it was like, oh, damn. I mean, what does this mean for the fate of the haves and the have-nots? And if loving you is wrong, I mean, that sounds, it, it seems like an eternity ago. I mean, this was five years ago, 2017, folks, when it was uncertain what the future of both of those shows would be as they were airing on their own network. And since then, I mean, there have just been so many projects that Tyler Perry has put out since the deal or the ink on the contract dried for Viacom. I mean, it's hard to even fathom, but we're coming up on three years since the original release of The Oval, Sisters, Assisted Living, House of Pain, Ruthless, Bruh. And, you know, we have the upcoming show uh, Zatima later this year, which, of course, is going to be new. But over the years, you know, for better or worse, more and more people have just, you know, said, man, I mean, it's like BET is the Tyler Perry Network. If it isn't one of his new shows airing on, you know, uh, Wednesday or Tuesday nights, it's a Tyler Perry movie reruns of House of Pain or Meet the Browns. And that's it. I mean, before Tyler Perry, all you would see is Baby Boy <laughs> on a BET. But nowadays you got the likes of Fresh Prince, Living Single. Uh, Martin, you know, all the reruns, and for the life of me, I don't know why Living Single isn't on BET Plus. Seriously, I, I really wish it was instead of uh, what is it on Hulu? I don't want the ads, people. I don't want the ads or Fresh Prince. Why don't you put that on there? I don't got Peacock, so I think I got it briefly for Bel Air, and that was it. But, um, it's a question a lot of us are asking what exactly will happen, and let's be honest here. I think it's clear that whatever move is made, it's going to take place prior to 2024. Like, of course, maybe sometime next year we'll find out whether or not there's be a, there's been a renegotiation of contract where Tyler signs a new deal with Viacom where it's like, look, Mr. Perry, you just blew it out of the water. You created all this content, ratings. Some of the shows did better than others, but overall... You revitalize the BET network because to be completely honest, aside from like hit the floor and maybe a couple of the shows of uh, being Mary Jane, I don't think many people tune into BET, you know, prior to Sisters or the Oval. So I, I remember like as soon as 106 and Park was over or even before it really ended, you know, when things really moved over to the Internet, I was I really wasn't checking for BET like that. So. It's just one of those things where, kind of like the video I did recently, did Zatima hurt or help the series of Sisters? The same could kind of be said about Tyler Perry. If indeed he decides not to renew with Viacom, what is BET going to do? Because when it seems like 80% of your content is Tyler Perry content, what if, just like on OWN, he takes all of his shows with him? I mean, we don't see if Loving You is wrong, Have and Have Not, or Love Thy Neighbor, or Pain's reruns on OWN. They're, they're gone. OWN is pretty much a... I don't even know how it stays afloat, to be completely honest. I know Queen Sugar's getting ready for their final season, but that's it. So I'm wondering what the plan is. Of course, let, let me be transparent. You all know. I'm not in the room where it happened. I was listening to the Hamilton soundtrack last night. Sue me. I, I wasn't in the room when the contracts were, you know, put together. I don't know what negotiations are being made now. I mean, Tyler Perry just, it, it's just, a, he's a phenomenon. I feel like, I feel like Viacom needs Tyler more than Tyler needs Viacom, to be completely honest. Especially when you go back to, Around the time the Medea, uh, what was it? The Medea farewell tour or play? Yeah, the play came out. He announced his idea for a platform, a streaming platform for all of his projects. But then, you know, that kind of fell through when it was uh, Dish uh, Direct TV 
that said they wouldn't have Viacom in their uh, cable package anymore. And I think because of that and other things behind the scenes, it was decided that Tyler would work together with Viacom to create BET+. Plus. So I feel like for me, the Viacom deal, and I think Tyler even said it himself, Viacom allowed for a bigger playground to kind of allow me to put out all the content I produce because basically own was just like a lake, but Viacom is an ocean. You know, I'm put, I have so much content pumping out, but I can only so show much. I can only do so much on own compared to, Oh, I could put a Nickelodeon show out. I can do all this stuff on BET. Oh wait, now I got BET plus. And I know that there are like two separate deals, like, you know, the network and film deal. I don't know exactly where, um, you know, like the Netflix stuff falls into play. Like I said, I don't really know what's going on with that. But I do feel like Viacom, if Tyler is leaving, and look, again, I don't know. It's April 2022. For all we know, they probably already made the deals. It's just like the new, the news hasn't really broke out into the public yet. But it is risky when you put all your eggs in one basket. I mean, same thing was, you know, go back maybe a few years on the channel when people were like, hey, man, uh, are, are you ever going to do anything outside of the haves and the have nots? And what if I didn't do it? What if I only review that show? As soon as the show came to an end last year, I would have been screwed. I'm like, damn, what am I going to do? But I eventually branched out. If Loving You is Wrong, Green Leaf, and of course, all these other shows on uh, BET has now. It's just one of those things where Viacom might be in trouble specifically BET because think of it this way the thing about Tyler Perry let's put the quality aside look because I know that's a whole nother discussion itself you know all oh, he's doing all these shows but they aren't good the way he films and produces content nobody else does it like him he could put out like a hundred episodes of a show in the same time that it would take you know major networks and companies to put out one season like I said, put the quality aside, but the fact that Tyler does everything himself on his own studio lot, so it's not like he has to pay for location and whatnot. And like I said, I really don't know all the details about how this stuff works, but it seems that the cost effectiveness of letting Tyler Perry do his thing is a lot, it is less for like the companies to lose. So I feel like maybe Viacom, you know, with the deal they give Tyler a certain budget and then Tyler takes that does what he does on the studio and then boom here you go i just filmed like uh three shows so you got three seasons or one year's worth of material and i did that in less than a month and you know when it comes to like major networks and whatnot like cw or you know uh fox or something usually it takes him like a, a couple weeks to film one episode so it's just one of those things where it's going to be difficult for viacom to kind of recover without a Tyler Perry because they'll be back to the oh well here's this g g show that we have that's doing all right but we can only put out like maybe 30 episodes a year as opposed to Tyler who could put out maybe 60 episodes of a hit show a year so I'm very interested to see what Tyler Perry Studios is going to look like in 2024 I mean remember Tyler said that he's slowly but surely um letting go of the letting go of the reins for his projects like he'll be doing uh, other things while you know writers and directors will be you know working on projects that he usually did solo so i wonder again what it's going to look like especially when you look at shows like assisted living and house of pain where ratings have been tanking and you know those are only two shows it feels it seems like the oval and sisters make up the slack for those two shows it's just that I really am curious to see what a new deal will look like, given how lucrative this Viacom deal was in 2024 with all the success Tyler Perry has had. Damn. At, at this point, it's like people have said, just give the man his own network. But it seemed, and this just, this was a discussion I had way back during the deal uh, when it first came out, or maybe not just when it first came out, but when, you know, Sisters is really taking off. And the conversation I had with somebody kind of revolved around the subject of, I think maybe Tyler linked up with Viacom due to the fact that it was less of a burden for him. Think of it this way. It's more of a risk to invest money in your own network to put out your own product. Like, yeah, you got an audience, but 
it's a risk of, okay, will the ratings be high enough? Will there be a lot of return on my investment? But when you work with an already established network that could use somebody with your talents, as well as you maintaining ownership, which is Tyler's big word here, while you maintain ownership of your intellectual property, why would I run the risk of investing money in creating my own network when an already established network wants me to work with them? Hey, hey, you work with us, we'll do things own wouldn't do for you. You could put out as much content as you want. You can make movies. Oh, that streaming platform that you had? Why don't you link up with us? We'll create one together. I don't blame them. I don't blame I don't blame Tyler Perry for doing that. But the thing is, we're moving to 2024. What what's the game plan? I mean, of course, I don't know what happens um, you know, on the phone or behind doors and meetings and whatnot. So as far as I can tell, it seems that, you know, Viacom and Tyler are doing very good together. It's not like uh the tensions we know that Tyler had with um, OWN and TBS when it came to like Oprah or TBS executive telling him, hey, you know, uh, the season start, this, these shows started off well, but, you know, ratings and just the fan reception has declined. And we had some test audiences and they figured that if you had other writers and what, no, 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 I'm doing it my way. So I don't think this happened yet on BET. And the thing is, well, something happened because Tyler says he's getting new writers. Well, he hasn't let go of all the shows completely. And to be completely honest, well, hey, Sisters is a hit. The Oval is that thing. So it's just one of those things where, and he's getting older. You know, he's past 50. He has a son. He's really ready to, I don't want to say retire, but kind of slow things down and not have as much pressure on himself when it's like look the studio is just extremely successful i'm a freaking billionaire i think it's time for me to you know kind of take the next generation of writers and directors under my wing so there you go but i'm very curious to see what's going to happen in a couple years from now if not next year so what do you think do you think viacom is going to renegotiate with tyler perry uh do you think tyler's going to say thanks but no thanks let me do my own thing create his own network, create his own platform. I don't know. It just seems to me like the core of this was why invest in something when another network wants to have me. So let's talk about it more in the comment section below. I, I hope this leads to a good discussion here. And if you know of anything in regards to like the contract and what may or may not be happening in the near future, let me know. Let's talk about it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hit the thumbs up button to show you liked the video. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Hit subscribe and hit the bell icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel.